Good morning. Good morning. Thank you, Donnie and Shirley, for that beautiful music. You probably wonder why I'm standing up here, not as much as I am, but uh, <laughs> you know, Pastor Patty's sick, so Andy did the first service. I'm doing the second, and thank God we have a guest pastor, <laughs> Pastor Owens, with us today to do the message, because I would not want to have done it. It would have been a short service. I got a couple announcements we want to bring up. Um, first, uh, on the back of your bulletin, you'll notice the official board leadership change there. We had our meeting Thursday night reorganized. If you have any questions, see any other one. Somehow I got to be two hats. Craig has two hats, so we're looking for more people to be at large on our board to help us out if you want to be interested in that there. And we still need two trustees. We're still looking for two trustees. Dan's filling in as the head trustee for now, which I think he'll do a great job. Oh, I know he'll do a great job. So we thank him for that. We're going to have some other announcements coming up. Probably next week we'll be bringing out what some of the things we did at the board meeting we want to go over with everyone. So I guess uh, I think that's it. Oh, two announcements. So one is the Bible study, the Thursday night Bible study coming up with Lori. It's going to have this in the book here, the bulletin about it. If you read your bulletin, please. And also Jeff Starner's doing one on Tuesday nights, the second and fourth. Tuesdays of the month. Jeff, he puts a lot of time into these studies getting them ready, so you know he's looking for people to come out. We thank Jeff for that there. Today is the last day for the soup drive. You notice the chest is getting pretty full. I guess tomorrow you still could bring it in before it's taken away, the stuff's taken out, so if you have any more soup you want to donate. This time, we'll, we're going to have the praise team first, then we'll go right into the Solid Rock Ministry of Music after that. I extend a welcome to everyone this morning, um, everyone who is here as well as everyone who is joining us online. Let's, uh, let's praise and worship our God through song this morning. I hope you'll join us as we sing about the heart of worship.
Galatians 2.20 says, I have been crucified with Christ, and I no longer live, but Christ lives in me. The life I live in the body, I live by faith in the Son of God, who loved us and gave himself for us. Our next song is Jesus Loves Me. love and solid rock is going to sing about God's love and as we prepare our hearts for prayer it's my prayer that God's love would show through us and we would reflect his love in all that we do and our final song is love through me
Davis Church family, on this day we think more about love, I think, than any other day. I thank you for loving us. I thank you that we all love each other. And let's pray together this morning. Oh, loving God, we thank you most importantly for the love that you have shown us from day one. From day one when the world was created and day one when we were created. I thank you for loving us on the good days and on the bad days and on every day. Every day you love us and I thank you for that love. And now, Lord, we ask that we would be able to show love one to another in this congregation, in our homes, in our workplaces, wherever we are, in the grocery store, wherever we are, that we might show the love, the love that God gave us first. We praise you this morning, and we thank you, and we pray in the name of Jesus. He loves me. Amen. Good morning. Uh, 1 John 4, 9, 11 tells us, This is how God showed us his love among us. He sent his one and only Son into the world that we might live through him. This is love. Not that we love God, but that he loved us and sent his Son, an atoning sacrifice for our sins. Dear friends, since God so loved us, we are also taught to love one another. Our first song this, this morning is Blame It On Love. How could he hang on that cross? And how could he suffer
This is usually the Sunday, uh, with, with being the, the February, the, the month of love, that we usually sing some of the older songs, the, um, what the, let me call you sweetheart, and we, we decided to put that in the closet a little bit this year and, and go with something a little different. And, you know, the Lord works in mysterious ways with, with, with this stuff because we chose this song not knowing that Pastor Pat would be ill and we'd have a guest speaker in today and how his message would somewhat tie into this song. Um, so, but our second song is I Can't Even Walk. And when, when you think about life and as we travel through life at times, you know, we tend to stray sometimes from, from the Lord. And when we stumble and fall and we were, oh man, what happened? And, you know, the Lord's there. And the line in here says, uh, I can't even walk without you holding my hand. And, you know, we, we need that. We need him and then trust that he's there holding our hand at, at all times. So our second song is I Can't Even Walk. Without you, 
guys. How true is that? When we try to walk by ourselves, we fail. But with the Lord that bear with us, taking us by our hand, it's so much nicer. You know, I learned something today, being up front here, because normally I'm in the amen corner in the back, and I like it back there. Well, you know, you always have, when they sing, they say about great singing, everyone. Well, when you're in the back, you don't hear hardly anybody else singing except yourself, which could sound pretty rough. When you're up front here sitting, all these wonderful voices you hear from the front and from the back, you know, coming to you. And it, it's just, it was amazing. It actually really touched me. So I want to thank everybody for their great singing this morning, for our praise team, the Solid Rock. Aren't we blessed to have those two groups? I mean, we have an awesome organist, the pianist here you know, with our church. It just, the music it makes is just so exciting. Now, next we're going to do the scripture reading, but disregard the bulletin. That's Pastor Pat's scripture, I guess, for next week. We're going to read Proverbs 3, 5 through 8, and that's on page 450 in, if you have the Pew Bible. I'll give you a chance to get to that. Proverbs 3, 5 through 8. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Isn't that great for you know, Valentine's Day, love year? You know, and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he will make your path straight. Do not be wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord and shun evil. This will bring health to your body and nourishment to your bones. And the Lord add his blessing on this reading. And now we're going to do a song. It's not going to be quite as good as me singing up front here, so I'm going to need you all out there to really start and sing loud. Be him 97. All hail the power of Jesus' name.
course, I forgot to dismiss the kids. Oh, they're welcome to go. I even said about Andy. My wife even said this morning, don't forget the reason. Until I looked at the bulletin and went, rah, rah. <laughs> So, <laughs> the kids are dismissed. So, just give me time. We're going to talk a little. We're not going to have the prayer right away because Pastor Owens is going to do the prayer. Thank God. And uh, <laughs> he's really great you know, filling in for us. But um, so, so, a couple things about him. Um, him and his wife, Connie, were missionaries from 75 to 83. And for four of those years, I can do that, you know, four of those years, he was in Scotland. You know, it's a, he's, in, he's actually was in the ministry from 83 to 2018. Now he's retired, but doesn't look like he's old enough to be retired yet, I don't think. And he actually was served in Pastor Pat's home church for many years. So that ain't more, I mean, it's great to have him here. So Pastor Owens, we're going to turn it over to him now. And he'll do the prayer and the rest of the service. Thank you very much. I understand Pastor Pat stands down here for said service. Is that right? Yep. Uh, what I don't want to do is be a distraction. So, you know, I want to try to do as much as you normally do, the way you do it. And that way you're not thinking, why is he doing that? Why is he doing this? But nevertheless, we're thankful for the Lord. Oh, marvelous thing. I just have to echo that. All right, I didn't do anything. Oh. Did it turn itself off? Here we go. Oh. How'd that happen? Must have been when I put my vest over the top. There we go. Back on live stream. We're good to go. They could hear me here, but you were in trouble, weren't you? But we're glad you're here. Let's look to the Lord together in prayer. Let's pray. Father, we do thank you that we're able to share together. We could worship you in song. Lord, that we could laugh, maybe cry a little bit. And here as we would come, we thank you that we have access because of Jesus to your very throne of grace, your mercy seat. You are a great and an awesome and a wonderful God. We thank you for all that you've done, are doing, and yet you shall in the unfolding of time toward eternity. Father, we recognize that we come short quite often, and we confess that as sin, for that's what you call it. We miss the mark for your glory. And Lord, we miss all that you had designed even before the foundation of this world, that we might walk in those works and accomplish your purpose. Lord, I pray that even as we talk about these few verses this morning, that you would, you would guide us in that. And this week as it unfolds, that it would be a good week. Lord, that it be a good week because we walk in your ways and we're a blessing to others because of that. Father, we, uh, we give thanksgiving for the great grace that you bring, the health that we have to be here. Lord, for the, uh, for the family that we have and that you're at work in all of our lives that we might be able to reflect your love as we've talked about that marvelous love that was shed abroad through Jesus Christ, your son upon the cross of Calvary. And that we have hope of uh, uh, coming into a right relationship with you because our sin has been dealt with. And Lord, that we're filled of your spirit and we have the power to overcome sin and temptation in our life. Indeed, we are blessed. So we thank you that we can pray not only for ourselves, but for others. You know our need and what shall be coming. May we not be blindsided. May you be more than able. Lord, we'd ask for healing in these bodies and all the situations, and they are many that are listed in the bulletin and even beyond. Lord, for the reconciliation of relationships that have been broken, that there would be healing and forgiveness. Lord, we pray for our nation, that you would guide us. It seems like we're running off the rails. There's so many that have forgotten the underpinnings, the foundation of what you designed us to be and how we might live. Oh, Lord, we pray that uh, for those within our local and state and and government, uh, uh, federal government uh, agencies and houses, that uh, those that love you might have a voice and be fearless and share and stand. And, And, Lord, that there would be a work of renewal yet in and amongst us, bringing us back to you. 
We pray for the relieving of, of anxiety around this world. We think of the earthquake in Turkey and Syria uh, as the uh, number approaches 20,000 souls that have perished in that. Uh, Lord, we, uh, we'd ask that, that you would be in the midst helping those that uh, are, uh, are, are trying to find those that yet may still be alive. Though a culture that uh, many would not trust in you, nor know, nor hear of you. And there would be great antagonism, Father. We, we pray that you would break through in the brokenness of the lives at this time. And that the gospel would be shared and many would come to faith in Jesus. Lord, may that be a story that comes again and again and again as we await your coming. Lord, the days are dark and may yet get darker. But Lord, you shine brightly as your love is cast abroad within our hearts and through us to a world in need. So hear our prayer and bless the word and fit us for service to your glory in Jesus' name. Amen. As we shared our, uh, our, our, our preaching passage today um, would, uh, would not be on the Trinity as uh, Pastor Pat had gone ahead and shared, but uh, would be in the, uh, the book of Proverbs, chapter 3. Um, I had an opportunity to uh, sit at the uh, Susquehanna District uh, meeting, Pastor's District meeting this past Wednesday. First time I had attended that, I've been a part of the Penn Jersey District like forever. And uh, we moved to Elizabethtown back in, uh, in March of, uh, of last year. And uh, so just sort of getting acclimated and settled on in and that type of thing. And uh, it was just time to go and visit. Uh, Pastor Pat, he, he sat beside me at the meeting and we chatted a little bit as, as has been shared. His, uh, his parents uh, were, uh, were under my care at, uh, at Royers Ford. And I believe that I met Pat for the first time when I was pastoring at Birdsboro back in the 80s. And he was considering his call uh, to ministry. And I'm so thankful that he responded to that. And it's been marvelous to, uh, to uh, be, uh, be watching the ministry as it unfolds and the blessing that he's had, and I'm sure that you have been in, uh, in his life. And uh, we miss him this morning, don't we? Say amen. He might be watching on live stream, all right? You, you want to be fit, all right? He, he knows who you are because he knows where you sit. Uh, so at, at, at any rate, um, we're, uh, we're here, and the, uh, the preaching is different. He called me on the phone because I had said, you know, if you ever need somebody, you know, I'd I I'd, I'd make myself available. I don't get to preach very often. I am preaching for Pastor Dan at our Marietta Church, all right, Reich CC, uh, uh, the, the next two Sundays. And the Lord had laid upon my heart for uh, preaching from the book of Proverbs. So uh, five, three, uh, three and four, are, excuse me, five and six are often a, uh, a verse that's well known, maybe a life verse. You know what I mean by life verse? Uh, a verse where you, you know, sort of hang on that all through your life in that way. Proverbs 3, 5, and 6 is not mine. Mine's uh, Galatians uh, uh, 6, uh, 9. But uh, nevertheless, is there anybody here, you know, that this Proverbs 3, 5, and 6, yeah, that's my verse. That's my verse. All right, we have one, two, three. We only had one in, in the 8 o'clock service, all right? We don't have time to go through and, and for you to say why that is, okay? Because uh, I ran overtime last, uh, you know, first service. Uh, so uh, at any rate, uh, as you have opportunity, share with others why that is. You know, oh, I'm so glad that the pastor was led to preach on those particular verses because they are good. They are very, very good. Uh, they have to do with life and how we would live and how we would serve. And uh, as I was preparing for, uh, for Reich's, uh, the, uh, you know, Pastor Pat phoned yesterday and said, you know, Ralph, uh, I'm not feeling well. I, I have the stomach virus and I need somebody for me to preach uh, tomorrow. Would you be able to? And I thought, wow, you're calling that in real fast, aren't you? You know, we, we only spoke about that on, uh, on Wednesday. Uh, but uh, nevertheless, uh, since uh, that was uh, already in the, in the working phase and, and it was, it was just a bunch of scribbles and thoughts over the past couple of weeks as I've sort of ruminated on scripture, meditated uh, on it. Uh, I, I like to print it out, and then, uh, then as I work on that, I, I jot some things down. I end up with more questions than I have comments. Has that ever happened to you? All right, you know, so why is that? Does this interconnect, you know, and so forth? So that's what I had. I had this page with, with all these notes jotted down that had no coherence, and I thought, I have yesterday afternoon to bring some coherence out of my notes, and then I went to read them, 
and I couldn't even read my writing. Does that happen to anybody here? Okay, I, I jot them too fast, okay, as I put them down because I don't want to forget them because that happens more and more. But nevertheless, uh, you know, I worked through that. So I hope that we have some coherences we would go ahead and share today. And I'm thankful that that was already in the works. And uh, from the 8 o'clock service, I found out what does and doesn't work. And a little bit more when I get to Reich's, okay? Next Sunday, it better be good. Amen? So if you have any thoughts when we're all finished and we're doing that pleasant threes afterward, thank you very much, Pastor. Glad you were here. Nice message. All right, and that's what I do want to hear. Uh, that uh, at any rate, if you have some thoughts, you could have done this better, feel free. I'll still love you. Uh, you know, uh, a, a, a good friend, a good friend tells it like it is. Amen? Tells the truth what is rather than what you would want to hear. Well, let's, let's go ahead and, and jump in here. And why are these so, so special? Well, I, I think the truth we want to hold before us as we work through these verses this morning is this, that my inward activity, my inward, that which happens inside that would be unseen by most, those that are closest to us might be aware, um, but uh, what normally is not seen uh, should lead to an outward blessing, uh, something that would be visible to others. Uh, something that, that, that speaks or brings that which is good into their life. And, and is there anything better than the goodness and the love of God himself? I, I don't think so. And that's what I think Solomon's trying to get to here as we would look uh, at the, uh, the book of Proverbs. This is how life uh, is. Uh, it shows both the positive as well as the negative, things that are good, things that are not good. And in a general way, this is how God has ordered the universe. And if we walk in God's ways, then the outcome would normally be this. But if we don't, the outcome would be otherwise. Uh, so we, we have some of these, and when we begin, and if you have your Bibles, I encourage you to open them up if you would, uh, even if you think you know these verses, and, and follow along with me as we talk about them. Uh, and the first would be verse 5, trust in the Lord with all of your heart. Is that something that's a positive or a negative statement? Trust in the Lord. That's a positive statement, all right, so that we would find that we start with what God wants me to do. God wants me to trust in the Lord. The word used there for trust has to do with, with being confident. Do you have confidence? It has to do with expressing the feeling of safety and security that's felt when someone uh, can rely on, on, on someone else or something else. Ladies, you particularly like that, don't you? Uh, you, uh, you, you like to have confidence, uh, security, let's put it that way, uh, in that which would surround you. Uh, if you're in a marriage relationship, that, the, uh, uh, that which your husband would do and, uh, and how he's faithful in his work and so forth that, uh, and cares for things uh, around the house. Um, I'm not trying to be stereotypical. I'm just saying this, this, is, this is how God's wired us up, isn't it? That, uh, you know, that that's where, but, uh, and we want to trust in our spouse. We do. Uh, we, we better be able to. Otherwise, wow, uh, that, that really, because love and trust uh, walk side by side in that way. But it says, trust in the Lord, the Lord. The Lord is to be premier in all of our life. Jesus first, first. Uh, marriages that start off that way and I think that are built on prayer and the sharing of God's word are the strongest because they have that foundation which, uh, which does not change. Uh, there might be some here that uh, uh, you came to faith after you were married uh, or you have a significant relationship with that might be. Um, and, uh, and, and that's a, a good thing as well. But those that don't have that are really in, in, in a shaky part, you know, and, and we're reminded what happens when things shake just on the news when we, when we get, think about that terrible earthquake, 7.8, uh, on, the, on the Richter scale and the damage that it has, has brought. We've uh, been through a number of years that have been difficult, have we not? We have. And uh, we don't want to linger on that. We do want to move forward. But I think it is illustrative of, of, of where we'd be by way of trust. There's uh, many of us that trusted in our work. Would that not be true? 
And then all of a sudden, where was it when everything was shut down? We didn't have work. We, we also might trust in our bank account. And uh, we're thankful for that which the Lord gives. I'm thankful for what the Lord gives. I'm thankful that, that through the years, the Lord allowed me to put some, some money aside for retirement because Social Security and cutting it, all right, uh, in, in, in every way. And that, you know, do, do people trust in the government? Uh, yeah, they do. Uh, people trust that the government would provide all of their needs. And we would find that, uh, you know, uh, those things by way of our job, it's no longer there. Uh, when you don't have a job, you normally don't get paid. And then the money that you did have slips away pretty fast, doesn't it? And then, where is our trust? Um, I, I, got a, I got a stimulus check or two, did you? All right, I was thankful for that. Um, I was uh, thankful that I was able to take some of that money and bless others with it. Amen, you probably did that as well as you saw the Lord providing within your life. Uh, there are others that uh, would go ahead and spend it hilly-nilly and then want the government to do more and to give more. And that's where the trust is. And that's beginning to break down now. The government was never meant to met all, meet all of our needs. Nor our job to be about what life is all about. Or money to be the total of our security. Or even those that would be closest to us, our spouse, our best friend to be the one in whom we always see the right thing done or said. Everyone and everything else fails but Jesus. I need him. You need him. Our world needs him. We just sometimes either forget or some might ever never know it says trust in the lord the lord with all my heart you know the word that's used there just has to do with uh, the the whole range of meaning with uh, of who we are our our inner nature and all of our components uh, not just the organ that beats and and pumps the blood and what's what's in the blood the the life is in the blood moses reminds us of and that life in the blood has to do with the atoning sacrifice, the love of God upon the cross of Calvary. Life is in the blood. The heart pumps the blood. But then again, the lungs, they give the oxygen <laughs> that, 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 that moves around the lung, all right, uh, in, in the blood. And, and that's helpful too. Uh, and there are other things that, that would go into that. But trust in the Lord with all of your, with, with your very being. To put it another way, Solomon is saying, hey, look here. There's a lot that the Lord's given, and we're so thankful for that. He's blessed us in so many ways. But don't forget, there's the one creator, God, that made you, that knows you, that is the sustainer. Paul reminds us that he is the one, Jesus Christ, that holds the whole universe together, if it were not for him, nothing would hold together. So great and awesome is his power. And he talks about bringing that to bear into our lives. He is premier, and that's why we're here today, so that you might ascribe to him the glory that is due his name, that you might adore him, that you might do that. In, uh, in, in, in praise by way of song, that you might do that in attitude by way of prayer, that you might do that in how you would think, even as you would consider the word today, as you would be open to him. Because Pastor Ralph is not the only one speaking here this morning. You realize that, don't you? There's God, the Holy Spirit, that's moving up and down this aisle and in and out and all through these pews. And he knows you. I mean, he, he knows you. And he affirms that which blesses him. And he points the finger for those that are not. And he says, hey, let's change this so that it can be more like that. And more reflective of who I am. Because one day, when we see one another face to face, know this you will finally be 
like me. And that's Jesus talking. <laughs> and finally, be like me. So with all of your heart. And that's what he wants us to do. God wants me to trust in the Lord with all my heart. The positive. Then there's a negative statement. Negative statements usually have not in them, don't they? So he tells us what we are not to do. Sometimes we're better at telling what not to do than what to do. But here it is. God does not want me to lean on my own understanding. It's easy to lean on my own understanding. I think I know. But it's only when it doesn't work that I find out that I didn't know anything. It was shared that I spent uh, four years in Scotland uh, from 79 to 83. We were working with Teen Missions International out of Merritt Island, Florida. Connie and I were sent over to, uh, to Scotland to open up and develop their European office. And uh, so we landed there in the middle of February. I think it was, we were told it was the coldest winter there in, uh, in the past decade, in the past 10 years. We could believe it. Um, at least, you know, the buildings that we were in didn't have any central heat. If you wanted a fire, you build fire in a fireplace. And that's, uh, that's the heat uh, that you got. Um, the, uh, the buildings were uh, red sandstone with two foot thick walls that uh, had these, these flats, like an apartment, uh, had been unoccupied. And uh, so that when we begin to build our fires, it began to heat up. The, the walls began to condense and the water would run down the walls and onto the floor. And if there was carpeting in that room, that carpeting would come squishy as, uh, as you would walk on through and, 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 and such as uh, uh, where we were. And uh, we were learning to, to trust in the Lord uh, more and more uh, for, uh, for our, our, our daily care. Uh, and uh, not lean on our own understanding. We, we came back in, in 83. Um, I had been asked for the uh, three years prior to that to uh, pastor a uh, congregational church in our small village called Catron. It was in Ayrshire. Uh, it would be on the west coast and it would be southwest of Glasgow by about a 40 minute drive, uh, quite, quite near to Prestwick Air, uh, Airport. Um, Ayrshire uh, is the uh, home of Bobby Burns, uh, Balach Mile, uh, which was his hometown, uh, was just up the road about two miles from, from our village of Catron. Uh, I was asked to preach, I was asked to pastor this church, and by the time I had, had finished that three-year stint and was uh, going to uh, school now at Evangelical in Myerstown, um, I knew what I didn't know. <laughs> And uh, I, I think it was very hard for the, uh, for the folks uh, there in Catron. They were, they were blessed to have a pastor. I was more than green behind the ears. And uh, I'm, I'm thankful for the, uh, for the gracious way that they, they cared for me. But I, I knew what I didn't know, and I knew I didn't know much. And the journey of life uh, began uh, where not only in my studies, but in the, in the activities that outflow as you uh, deal with people, um, begin to uh, develop for you a, uh, a, a better way of, of caring and ministering uh, the good and the love. And I'm thankful for those that came up alongside and, uh, and shared with me. Uh, because if I would lean just on my own understanding, I would be in trouble. Um, I'm told you get out here about 12.15. Is that right? That can't be right. No, quarter to 12. Yeah, there we are. So I'm saying it says 11.24. So I, I have time to tell another story. Uh, be careful who you lean on. I'm, uh, I'm learning of my frailty, and I'm becoming more and more aware of it. And the older you get, the more you see the frailty, amen? You, uh, you might say, uh, um, I retired from uh, full-time pastoral work in 2015, part-time at Royce Ford in 2018. Um, Connie and I both celebrated our 70th birthday this, uh, this past year. 
And uh, so uh, we're, we're becoming more frail in, uh, in many ways. But when I first arrived at Royers Ford, um, my, my secretary was Wanda. I don't know if you've ever met Wanda, but Wanda is Mark Tiford, Pat's brother's wife. Their son, Corey, is in the, uh, the prayer uh, guide uh, that you would have who has had an accident, uh, uh, quadriplegic, and is evidently having uh, issues with, uh, with his blood and is back in the hospital. Wanda was my secretary. All right, that would be uh, sister-in-law to uh, Pastor Pat. And uh, I uh, was you know, doing my pastoral thing, and uh, then uh, our, our organist and, and pianist and, and music director, uh, he'll go unnamed, um, said, Ralph, we, we need to change the clock. It was in October. And uh, he said, uh, uh, you know, let's, let's go ahead and change the clock here. And uh, there was a, a large opening. Uh, there was uh, an addition to the original building that was the church. And uh, when they put the second, which became the main sanctuary, they, they sort of just carved out the whole side wall and had these big doors that opened and closed. And, and they were probably uh, nine or ten feet tall uh, in, uh, in that way. And uh, I said, uh, okay, well, uh, yeah, I'll, I'll help with that. I'll go get the ladder out of the garage. And he says, no, 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 you don't need to do that. Stand on my shoulders. <laughs> Got to be careful with those organists. <laughs> I looked at him. He was bigger than I was, so, all right. So I thought, okay, well, you'll probably be able to hold me. So, uh, you know, this is all about lean not on your own understanding. Lean not, not, not on your own understanding. So I said, all right. And he, he got down, you know, like this. And uh, I got it, and I put one leg on his shoulder. And I went to launch myself up on the, on the other leg, and he was going to stand up, and then I was going to put my hands against the, the wall, all right, uh, above the opening. And this was all going to happen. And, uh, you know, th there was no practice session. There was no net. And uh, so one, two, three, and I pushed him. When I pushed down with my leg, and as he was going up, wouldn't you believe he listed to the left? And when I put my right leg down, there was nothing there. So what happened to me? I came down on the floor in a heap, and I hurt myself. Great was the fall. Um, this, this wrist from here uh, had a number. It was, well, actually, it was just broken right on through. It was more like a Z-bend at that particular time. It went out and down and this way. And uh, I looked at that, and I said, that's not good. Now, now, Wanda, she's secretary, and, and the office was right at the back of the sanctuary. She heard this kerplunk, uh, and I think it was probably pretty loud. And she came out, and she looks at me in a hump laying there on the floor saying, this isn't good. And, and Wanda, in great wisdom, she calls out, I'm going to go get Connie. <laughs> And, of course, Connie's my wife, and we live next door in, in the parsonage, and she did. And, and uh, I, I required uh, surgery and pins and all sorts of things that, that would be a part of that. And, yes, now that I'm older, guess what bothers me with the weather, all right? And this is bothering me right now. Yeah, it's catching. Be careful what you lean on. Solomon says, don't lean on your understanding. I'm saying don't lean on anybody. No, God's given us one another. He's given us one another to help one another in this journey. But do be careful because ultimately those that we lean upon the heaviest may give out unless they're of the Lord. All right? So please don't, don't misunderstand. Don't lean on other people. I mean, I'll give people their arm. Say, can you hold me? I think so. Can you hold me? I'm not sure, but we'll try. <laughs> and, and, and we'll journey together. But do not lean on your own understanding. If we do our own understanding, we will fall. And, and, and 
I'm concerned right now. I really am. And, and in my heart, when I, when I look in my neighborhood, when I, when I look in this great nation that we call the United States of America, there's too many people leaning on their own understanding. There's people that are taking what's true and making it false, that are rewriting what gender would be, what marriage would be, what life should be. And we're moving because of that further and further from the underpinnings, the foundation of what Solomon is reminding us to trust in. And the further we get, when we stand to truly stand, I fear that it will list to the side and the fall will be great. And there may not be a Wanda <laughs> to go get somebody else to help. Trust in the Lord with all of your heart. Lean not on your own understanding. But in all your ways, acknowledge Him. Acknowledge. We can use more acknowledgement. If we, if we had more acknowledgement, I, I wonder if there might be more understanding of the Lord rather than what I think is true or what I make is true. Acknowledgement has to do with, with perceiving, to experience, to confess, to consider, to know relationally, to, to, to know and to make known. Um, I've not looked through your, your bylaws. Didn't have a chance in the past. It's not even 24 hours since I talked to Pastor Pat. <laughs> that, uh, but, but within the Evangelical Congregational Church, um, part of our mission statement is to know Christ and to make him known. To know Christ and make him known. To have something and that which I have to let others know what it might be. Um, that, in part, is to acknowledge. Did you ever walk into the room and feel like you were invisible because you were never acknowledged? It's not a comfortable feeling, is it? Acknowledging is sort of a, a good thing. I, I, I appreciate. I was acknowledged today, all right? You know, Pastor Ralph is here. I appreciate that. We don't want to go on and on and on. Um, but, but, you know, who I am, we're, and we're thankful you're here. And I'm, I'm thankful that I'm here because uh, I followed Pastor Pat's ministry. And, uh, uh, you know, I've cared for his parents. We've, we've been at funerals together and, uh, and so forth. Uh, so, uh, you know, it's, it's a blessing. But acknowledging. Um, let me give you an illustration. Um, that uh, would be from, from our family, particularly from my wife, my wife, Connie. I love her dealer. Uh, a couple of years ago, uh, she, she needed a new car. We got a new car. And she wanted a Jeep Wrangler. And uh, now remember our age. She, she had an aunt. She always talked about from the time we began dating. Uh, she said, I had an aunt that had a Jeep. And so that as, you know, and she was old. She was a retired school teacher. And uh, so here, now we're old, we're retired, and my wife has a Jeep. I had no idea what went into having a Jeep. I, I really didn't. Did you know that there's a whole Jeep culture? Anybody here uh, have a Jeep? All right. I had no idea that when you're driving uh, down the road, do, 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 if you see another Jeep, you've got to go like this. All right. Got to give the V sign, the V sign. And Connie's really good at that. If I have the privilege of driving her Jeep, you know, I'm driving along, and uh, she'll go boom. You know, and I said, what? She says, you didn't do this. I said, I missed it. She said, yes, you did. Now they're going to think that I'm not nice, all right? That I'm stuck on myself, whatever it might be, you know? So I'm driving along. There's a Jeep. Huh. Huh. Get back. Oh, that's pretty cool. All right? You know, that, that's part of the culture. What are you doing? You're acknowledging that that person had a Jeep. And I appreciate you. That's very good. I didn't realize that within the culture, there's this whole thing that not just when you're driving, you go like this, that you duck one another. You guys do any ducking? All right. No idea. You're going to learn something here today. You acknowledge by ducking. You know these little rubber duckies? 
<laughs> well, they make them in all different kinds of shapes and, and uh, you know, dressed up in all different ways. Uh, Connie came home from the grocery store uh, oh, maybe about a half year ago. She was so excited. She says, Ralph, I got ducked today. I said, you ducked? No, 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 I got ducked. Well, what does that mean? She says, I came out of the store and there was a duck on my Jeep. <laughs> I was a duck on my Jeep. That meant somebody liked my Jeep. Now, she had done some customization, you know. It was a white Jeep and it had a, uh, a black. It has hard top. We also have soft top. We can go ahead and put on. Uh, but uh, at any rate, uh, she, uh, she likes purple. Anybody else like purple here? I know in the first year we saw some purple. And uh, she, uh, she, uh, she found these mountains on Etsy. And uh, they, they were an applique to go ahead and put on the side. And these mountains uh, run uh, from, from, from in front of the front door to, uh, you know, behind the back door. And they're about that tall, and they're purple. And it's sort of the outline of a mountain. And one on one side, and one whole set on the other side. It took a whole afternoon for us to stick these things on. And I must say, they came out pretty nice. But she thinks she got ducked because they wanted to acknowledge her purple mountains. How many would say, absolutely, all right? That customization with a Jeep person is an important thing as well. So uh, I thought, oh, this is, this is a whole thing, acknowledging that they like something. Um, so uh, I, I went, on, uh, I went on, on my computer and Amazon, and I found out you can, you can buy, you know, bundles of these little rub, rubber ducks. So I, I got, got a bag of 50 ducks for, for her. And I gave them to her so she'd carry them in her car. So, you know, if she sees a duck that, or sees a car that she likes, she'd go ahead and put, put a duck in. And she has, I don't know, maybe about 24, 25 different, so there's two of each kind, uh, you know, personas. So she can look at that Jeep and she can decide which one best might go with that one, all right, and uh, put on there. So, and so she's had fun, some, some ducking. Enough of that. But it's acknowledging. And there, there's a part of a culture that acknowledges. And it doesn't matter whether you know them or not. You're just saying, I appreciate that you're a part of the culture. Solomon is reminding us that we are in all our ways acknowledge him. When I consider all my ways, I understand that is no matter where I am or what I'm doing, I have an opportunity to acknowledge the one that's given me breath and health and the ability to be and do any given day. So I acknowledge Jesus today. Thankful that he reached down into my life when I was not looking and he said, I want you to be my son. I want you to be in my family. Come, trust in me. I'll forgive you of your sin if you call out to me. And I did. I did that night. It was through Christian Endeavor hymn sing that, uh, that I did. And it was, the, uh, uh, it was with my wife, not, not my wife yet. Um, but uh, part of the journey that, that God reached down. I acknowledge him. And may God, by his grace, give us, grant us, in just the stuff of life, whether it be home or outside, with our friends or with strangers, not to be obnoxious, but in some way, we can give the visa. <laughs> There's victory in Jesus. <laughs> Amen? That we can go ahead and give a little something that maybe doesn't cost a lot. It doesn't have to. But it acknowledges that, you know, I care. I, I love. I love in the name of Jesus. And a spoken word can be a part of that. Waiting in a, in a, in a line to be checked out or uh, just in a conversation, you'd be standing there pumping gas. How's your day? Okay. That's how it often goes. Mm -hmm. Yours? Yeah. Be different if there were two Jeeps side by side. But you could say, how you, they say, how are you doing? Yeah, it's a good day. 
I know that God loves me and I know that he loves you. You acknowledged. You acknowledged that you're trusting in the Lord with all of your heart. You've acknowledged that you're leaning not on your own understanding, but on his. In all your ways, ah, you're acknowledging. And what does he promise to do? To direct your paths, to make your paths straight. I have a pretty good sense of direction. Anybody else here have pretty good sense of direction? Who has no sense of direction? You know what I don't like? I don't like when I, you know, bring up my phone maps and I, and I plug that in. And, and the first thing it says, go southeast. Huh? You know, uh, where's the sun? Okay. Where's the sun? <laughs> Which way? Do you know what I did? I went ahead and on my phone, I, I went ahead and I, I put a compass I put a compass so if if in that time you know because you're sitting in a parking lot and it's not sure which way you're pointed all right so it doesn't want to tell you to go left or right but it says I know you want to go southeast and I go ahead and bring that up and I could say "Ooh, southeast is going to be that way am I correct all right that way he will if we're leaning on him direct our paths because, you know, we're not separated. I could tell you story after story after story of how in my walk with Jesus, I didn't know which way to go, whether it be figuratively or actually, <laughs> whether I didn't know the road or the path that was in front of me or just what the next step might be in dealing with a situation. As I leaned in on Jesus, he did not fall, he did not fail, but he showed me the way to go. And there are various ways for that to happen. We don't have time to, to talk about that this morning. But nevertheless, I trust that you would maybe take a, a moment or two throughout this week and just you meditate on Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. Or 7 or 8, they're not quite so well known. We, we won't spend quite so much time with those today because time is fleeting. And I don't know how far you have to go to get your Super Bowl party. I need to go to Bally, Berks County. All right, that's, uh, that's where I'm headed. And I see that we are pretty much done with time. So we're going to wrap it up there. We're going to wrap it up there. These verses talk about the presence of Jesus. If you will acknowledge and recognize how that presence comes into your life. The next two verses talk about when we acknowledge how we would live so that we might experience his peace. His presence and his peace go side by side together. After the resurrection and Jesus appeared to his disciples, do you remember what the first words that he would say over and over and over again? Peace be with you. He was present and he announced his peace. Jesus is present. He's present here. He's present in your home. He's present in all of your circumstances. And as you would meditate a little bit more on, on uh, verses 7 and 8, you'll, you'll recognize that his peace comes in and it actually affects our inner being all the way down to our bones, the essence of the structure that holds us and allows us to move. And even that goes back to the blood because the marrow of the bone is all important in giving what the blood needs out into the body itself. 
His presence, His peace is here for you. So, Lord, we, we thank you. We love you. We care for you. We thank you that you are all the same doing that and even more within our lives. I thank you for my brothers and sisters who would sit here this day and listen to an exposition of your word and some stories from my life. Lord, may they be forgotten to the point where their story and how this scripture applies becomes more robust than ever as you would be present and bring your peace no matter what the circumstances that they face this day. And if there be one in the sound of my voice here or out in the airwaves of the internet, Lord, that doesn't know you, that hasn't yet made sense, had not yet come to the point to trust in you, that they would do so. Lord Jesus, I need you. I sin. I need to be forgiven. Come into my life. Deal with that sin. Dwell by way of your Holy Spirit. Make me like you and receive me in your time and your way into your presence for all eternity. So be glorified in Jesus' name. Amen. We have a hymn that Pastor Pat had chosen, I think, and that would be his second week on this, uh, the, uh, uh, the Trinity. So it would have been in the sun, but you know, it really works well. Uh, because as we uh, sing through the verses of 510, Jesus is all the world to me, you'll notice that uh, the, the themes of what we've been talking about today are also uh, made manifest in, uh, in those verses, reinforcing that fact. You know, I believe that's of the Lord's design. Don't you? Stand with me, please.
What a marvelous acknowledgement that is. Amen? He's my friend. I trust that you can say that from the depths of your heart to the glory of his name. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, our Heavenly Father, the fellowship and communion of God, the Holy Spirit, go with you now and abide with you always. Amen.